everyone, welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, Year 2, where this year we're reading through and studying the entire New Testament one chapter at a time. Thanks again for joining us and discovering God's plan and your part in it. All right, so we need to lay some ground rules here. The first thing I want you to hear from me, because we just talked about this before we started recording, is Jesus was speaking to the individuals in the crowd. So when you read Matthew 6, which is what we're reading today, you should be thinking about yourself and not everybody else, all right? So primary job, number one, this is not about your spouse. This is not about your boss. This is not about your pastor. This is not about your friend. This is not about your kids. This is about you. Mm -hmm. And actually, I feel the weight of it just as much, I promise. So today we are looking at Matthew 6. And remember the rule, it's about you, not about somebody else that you know. Well, it's interesting that you started the episode like that because I think I had the very same thought process when I read over verses six through, no, sorry, verses one through eight in chapter six. And a lot of it is talking about, um, it says give to the needy. And then the second section is the Lord's prayer. But the emphasis on giving to the needy is that one, you should be doing it, but rather than making like a big spectacle of how wonderful you are that you're giving, you need to do things. It actually calls it out and says like, do it in secret so that your heavenly father sees the things that you're doing, not to just flaunt to everyone else. Then the second part where it's talking about like verses five to eight about how you should pray, that it emphasizes that you shouldn't be basically doing it for a show again. So when I read these verses, it was hard for me to not just think of other people or be like, oh, that person could really do better with that or those people, they don't know what they're up to and they definitely do that. So I think what is good about what Ryan said at the beginning is that in these first eight verses and the whole book or excuse me, the whole chapter actually, it is really about being aware of your own self. I mean, being aware of those things too, like you want to be careful that you're not falling into other people's like show and flashiness uh, because I think that is very very easy to do these days in the church but also it's like it's meant to evaluate yourself and make sure that you are doing these things all for the glory of God and not for your own selfish gain. I'll tell you what the most shocking thing to me is so this is part of the Sermon on the Mount if you missed uh, Friday's episode Like, this is part of one sermon, most likely. It could be a collection of sermons, but Matthew has collected it all together. Matthew 5 to 7 is the Sermon on the Mount. This could be the section that is focused just on spiritual disciplines. Like, this is Jesus assuming of his audience that Mm -hmm. they are doing these things. And that is probably one of the most weighty things or one of the most attention-grabbing things that I noticed this read-through is actually not stated explicitly in the text. It's ex- it's kind of stated by what Jesus is saying. He's not saying, hey, make sure you take some time to fast. He's saying, when you fast. He's not saying, hey, when you get around to it, make sure you give. He's saying, when you give, when you pray. Um, <laughs> like, he's assuming that his audience, his disciples, the people that are interested in him, he's assuming that they're already doing these things. And I don't know all of you. I do know myself. And I know that in any given week or if any given month, maybe even any given what quarter, I might not be doing one of these things. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting that Jesus is assuming that his audience is familiar with each of these spiritual disciplines. And he is, he's emphasizing humility. Like he's saying, don't draw attention to yourself. And he is also starting a war with the scribes and Pharisees at this Mm -hmm. point. This is a very public sermon that he's giving. And he's saying, don't be like Uh. the hypocrites. And everybody knows who the hypocrites are right away. Like, you don't think people notice the people in the squares blowing trumpets when they give away money? Like, they know who he's talking about. Well, I think it definitely is talking about motivation, too. Like, what is driving a person to do this? If it's driving a person to be seen giving money, to be seen praying out loud, to be seen or known that you are fasting just for for the sake of being like, oh, I'm fasting today, um, or just any of those things, looking for the gratification of someone else outside of God, it's like falling short of the mark. It lands you right in the same group with all of those very hypocritical individuals that Jesus is calling out. I want to be super direct here because I want us to grow as much as we can. I think if you're not doing or practicing one of these things, I would encourage you Uh, to look into what it would look like to grow in that area of your life, just Mm -hmm. like I'm doing myself. I know I opened the episode saying this is not about you. This is about like, well, 
it is about you. It's not about somebody else. <laughs> so I don't want to be seen as like, well, I said it was your fault. Like it, it's my fault too. And I can tell you there have been significant times in my life where I was not giving period. I just wasn't doing it. Um, there's been many periods of time in my life where I was not praying. Like I'd be like, well, you know, I like think about God sometimes like that's kind of prayer. No, it's not. Uh, there's definitely been times where I was not fasting. There's mm-hmm. definitely times where I was not forgiving. So I would encourage you definitely always. These are the ground rules, but look over Matthew six and ask God, like, God, where do you want me to grow right now? Like which of these disciplines should I be growing in, in my life? Cause I know just from getting to know people that there's not many people left anymore that fast yeah. And it is a pretty seriously important spiritual discipline. And Jesus here is giving directions not too fast, but how to act when you fast. Mm-hmm. So like the assumption is if you follow me, you fast. I know those of you that are Bible nerds, you're like, no, wait a minute. He said later on that it, you don't have to. But he said that to his disciples who were walking with him um, saying like, hey, like the time for fasting is not right now. It's the time to celebrate the fact that God is with us. Um, but the time of fasting has returned. It's OK to do it. Uh, so then we kind of move into the the last part of the chapter, which I guess it would still go along with what you're saying with all these spiritual disciplines. Um, but I think something that caught my attention is all of this idea of <clears throat> keeping for yourself these treasures. Um, there are earthly treasures and there are heavenly treasures. And I think a lot of times we can think of um, actual money. And in verse 24, it actually does specifically call out money. But I think that we can even go beyond that too, because there are many people that try to store up things far beyond just money. Uh, People try to store up uh, credibility, fame, being well known. um, And those things are much higher on their totem pole than um, actually pleasing the Lord in their life's work. So I think it's like really important to remember that as well. And I think this idea of not being anxious that goes right on after it falls right into place with those things. If you're laying up treasures on earth, anxiety is like it's going to be present all the time because you're never going to equal up. You're never going to be the best. You're never going to be this, that, and the other thing because there's always going to be somebody who's like a little bit better or a little bit cooler or after a while you'll kind of fizzle out and somebody else will come along. So I think anxiety, our world is like caked with it, uh, is everywhere. And so I think this idea of anxiety coming right after it is no coincidence because if we're storing up treasures here on earth, we're going to have things to be anxious about, about what we're wearing, about who we're influencing or who we're being, um, I don't know, super cool to, whatever you want to say. Um, but I think if your heart is in the right place, if your motivation is for the Lord's work, these other portions of this chapter are going to fall right into place. You will continue to store up treasures in heaven and anxious thoughts will not be there because your full reliance and trust is going to be in God. It is interesting how there's like two separate sections in chapter six and starting in verse 19, Jesus kind of lays out this progression that is like, your treasure is not on earth, your treasure is in heaven. Stop being anxious about things. And, And honestly, When people try to make the case that it's like, well, you know, Jesus didn't mean that you can't be anxious. He literally says, don't be anxious about your life. Don't be anxious about what you're going to eat. Don't be anxious about what you're going to wear. Like that seems like that covers a lot. Um, And I think it's interesting as part of this progression. It's like, hey, if you are laying up your treasures on earth, you will find that you are more anxious. If you lay your treasures up on earth, you will find that you seek God's kingdom less and less. And I don't think that we can uh, ignore the fact that a king in Jesus' time, the, the most wealthy person in Jesus' time, would see that the way that most Americans live their lives today and be shocked at how poor they seem. So we do need to keep in mind and be aware of the fact that we have a lot more available to us. And um, just by like by accident or by nature, we lay up far more treasures on earth than they did. And and I don't mean that they were like immune. Certainly they were not immune. We've all dealt with sin. Sin hasn't changed. Um, but when your hope is in earthly things, that is power, possessions, influence, like money, all of it, when you hope in those things, even a little bit, that's the scandalous thing about what I think Jesus would say, even a little bit, you will find that you are more anxious. You are more worried about 
tomorrow. You are more worried about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. Actually, I think that what you're going to wear thing is really interesting. I think a lot of people worry about that a lot <laughs> uh, because it has to do not with just with what you wear. It has to do with who you associate with and who pays attention to you. And then finally, you'll find that you are less and less and less and less concerned about seeking first his kingdom. And the interesting thing, probably the most powerful verse in the whole chapter is uh, verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Which things will be added to you? All of them. All of them. So like, is this true or not? Is this verse true? Yes, it is. So it's okay. God will take care of you. And I also think just to add on to earlier when you were saying uh, the verse, it says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. It immediately brought to mind the verse in Philippians as well, which is reiterated later on in the New Testament. Uh, But chapter four, verse six, actually, it's like part of five, but it says the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. But again, that is a full reliance on God providing what you need. And not laying up treasures in er- like on earth, including like food. And, you know, there's scarcity times in our recent past that like, I'm sure a lot of people were freaking out because you're not sure what you're going to eat. You're not sure where it's coming from. Where's the money coming from? Are we going to have jobs in that like specifically referring to COVID and all the craziness that was part of that. Um, but I think that even in Matthew, as well as Philippians, there's this constant reminder that with thanksgiving and trust in your heart that God will provide for you, you don't leave your treasures on earth. It's in heaven. It's funny. You bring up the COVID thing. And I feel like COVID was a time and those that are like that have been around longer, you probably can think of other disastrous times or whatever. Um, I can think of most people kind of made it seem like it was okay to be nervous. It was okay to, to question things. It was okay to doubt like what was going on. But I knew a handful of people at that time that I actually thought were a little bit weird that actually weren't shaken at all. And we're like, no, like I'm, I'm not giving into this. I'm seeking the Lord. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to slow down. I'm not going to mm-hmm. give in. And like at that time in 2020, it was like, I don't know. I think that guy's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, but now I look back on those relationships and those people. I'm like, like wow, oh, you were pretty firm. And what like, a wise what person. Yeah. What a wise person. Because for me, just to be open, I was a person that was pretty nervous Mm -hmm. and I was a person that thought like, ah, you know, those guys that say, just trust God. Like, that's not very cool. You can't just tell people that. And now I look at, look back on that and like, man, I wish I would have been able to say, just trust God. I wish I, because really the way I was acting revealed that I did not actually trust God. And I know that's Mm -hmm. kind of scandalous. It makes you kind of uncomfortable. It makes me kind of uncomfortable, but I think it's true. I, I think I really did not trust God. And I want to grow in that area of my life. I want to trust God more. Mm -hmm. I I think um, just to wrap this up, I I used to, I graduated high school and I worked at this boys camp and my director at the boys camp, super, super wise man. um, He he would just like throw these weird little nuggets where you're like, what is that true? And and now like years later, I'm like, oh my gosh, what a, what a gift that I had to work for him. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the things he would tell me about what we were doing. So we were working with kids who were not Christians, um, who were not even like on the surface looking like they were very good people. Mm. Um, and I would always ask like, well, how are we teaching them this? And how are we going to get them to understand this? And how will they learn this? And he would always tell me, uh, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of all knowledge. That was like a verse that he always had. You can say knowledge, you can say wisdom. Um, and he would tell me that Ryan, if we can get these boys to trust God, he will fix everything else. And he's like, that's why when you're at camp and you're only seeking the Lord, you're better at playing your guitar. You're better at reading books. You're better at staying fit, like anything. He's like, think of literally anything. You can learn it quicker. You can do it better. It's because you're putting the Lord first. And and, and it was true. That was the crazy thing. It was like, whoa, I think he was actually right. And so just to just to land on that note, uh, you can <laughs> we called him Chief Art. We just called everybody Chief. But what Chief Art said is true because it's what Jesus said. He said, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and Mm -hmm. all these things will be added to you. And if you're listening to me and you're like, "Ah, this guy seems a little crazy, that's fine. You get a pass. That's okay. But I think, I think it's true. And it's not just like this. And I think it goes right back to where we were at the beginning. It's not like this secret recipe of do this and this and this and this, and you will find like right standing with God. It's all of those things with the trust and motivation of knowing that God is going to be with you and for you. And that your heart is in it, not for others, but for the relationship with God. I think that is like, and he takes care of us. He takes care of us. So the, your part is very simple. It's really take time to 
be thankful for the fact that God takes care of you, that, that God loves you, um, that, that God will give you all that you need. It may not look like what you think you need, but so often we think we need the wrong things. So the challenge is literally just to, to trust God, to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. That is like, make him your priority and do what he says mm-hmm. and trust that he will take care of you as you do that. Take a step, take a step that direction and see what God will do. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow in Matthew chapter seven. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining today's episode of God's Plan, Your Part. As always, please consider partnering with us as we are a listener-supported podcast that we hope to continue to grow with support from listeners just like you. We've made it super easy to partner with us, and you can support us by following the link in our show notes or our description. You can support us with as little as $3 a month. Every little bit of this helps so much, and we're so thankful for your support. With that in mind, here's today's reading. Matthew chapter 6. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret." and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then, like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is a lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness! No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. 
Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of God's Plan, Your Part. Don't forget, you can find us on just about every social media platform and YouTube. Let us know what you thought of today's episode, and if you have any questions, go ahead and post them there. You can also reach out to us directly at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. As always, if you don't have a Bible, or if you'd like to use the one that we use, uh, reach out to us via email, and we'll be happy to send one to you. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you again tomorrow.